right guys welcome back um, as I said I would do a tutorial on dynamic lighting and I'm going to go over that right now so first things first uh, we need to switch to a better map I'm not saying you can't do dynamic lighting on this type of map you absolutely can it's just a little bit more complex um, so let's go back over to this one right here one of my first uh, tutorial maps that I made okay so I have already um, started a little bit but first of all here's what you need to do you need to enable dynamic lighting and only update on drop uh, this is important because sometimes players you know they're f I'm not saying they mean to cheat but they can get carried away with something and be like oh look dynamic lighting really cool and they can just drag their token all over the place you know and uh, that's not good not good at all so here's what we are going to do um, two things a fog of war just in case um, because You'll see in a second why that's important. And update only on drop. Hit OK. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to up the GM op opacity so we can see the effects a little bit better because they've added a little bit more um, fine tuning to the uh, dynamic lighting. Okay, so here's what the map looks like now. You can see the Fog of War is actually darker what I've revealed from Fog of War than the um, you know dynamic lighting uh, the, the dynamic lighting overlay basically so here's what we do we go over to this box and we go down to dynamic lighting for this we just there's a couple cool things we could do, we could use uh, we could do freehand um, poly, polygon uh, poly, or polygon slash line um, we're going to do this one because we need those straight lines and as you can see I've already started going along the borders but I will finish alright so we're going to start again right here just click hold shift and just can keep that shift button shift button held down alright and this way it creates nice straight lines with the shift button held down and let's go down here and we want to right click uh, right clicking closes that uh, it sets it in stone um, the dynamic lighting in stone alright and so we click Hold shift down again and continue on clicking. I'm going to right click right there. And I want to scroll over and pick it back up. Now see there's a little bit of a gap right there, but it'll be fine. I'll show you what that does in a second when we get up there. It'll leak a little bit of light out of that, but it's not too big of a deal. And also, you want to have your lines kind of thick for this, because if they're too thin, uh, there can be problems. All right. Nope. All right. That's that. Now, the doors. This is a nice little trick. Um, you can either freehand it or polygon line. Change the color. All right. Make doors like yellow or red. We're going to do red. All right. And we're going to click right here. And we're going to kind of go outside the lines because, you know, this is, it can be a little finicky sometimes trying to select this, um, especially in smaller doorways. So we're just going to go out a little bit longer. So we just have to select this and we can move it off the map like that. All right. So we're going to put that back in place. We could copy it, um, but we're not. We're just going to uh, do the same thing for this door right here. All right. Alright, that's that. 
Um, so I have my fog of war set up. Now we need to test the fog of war. Um, again, we're going to bring this guy out. Uh, and we're going to shrink him down to size a little bit. We'll put him outside. And I will actually reveal some areas around here so he's not sitting out there completely in the dark because it's outside the house, you know. He should he should be able to see all this quite quite well. Okay. So he's outside the house right now. Let's go back to the oh I see that's the thing, that's the bad thing. Um sometimes you can forget like I just did to not put anything else on the map while it's in the dynamic lighting layer. So we're going to go right click the dude and go down to layer and put token layer. Alright, now we can go back to objects, objects and tokens. This guy, let's say he has uh, a dark vision of 40 feet. Let's just say he has that. Now, normally you would get this, alright? Now the player can't see all this stuff right here. He can just see that what I've shown him right here in this light area. Because all this other stuff is uh, still in the fog of war. Alright. Alright, and as you can see, we move in there and I'll actually, uh, I'm going to up the opacity here. So, this is what it looks like there. How cool is that? You know? And he can go through that door, and then boom. It's a nice little area right there. Let me put that away. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right. And then let's lower the opacity down so I can see some other stuff just a little bit. Okay. So that's your most basic way of doing dynamic lighting. A better way uh, to do this, let's say... You don't want, it's kind of uneasy on the eyes, right? Uh, so let's do this. It's, they added it in there a couple months back. Uh, light radius slash optional start of dim light. Let's just say he really only has um, like really good dark vision up to 20 feet. And after that, it's kind of dim light, you know? And this is just good also if... Um, if you want players to be fighting in the moonlight, you just go in here and be like in a radius of five feet for normal and dim light. Um, starts at, uh, oh wait, sorry, I was wrong. Do uh, like 50 feet, 60 feet, whatever. How well they can see in dim light, maybe 100 feet, and dim light starts at 20 feet. And um, that way, everything that's obviously within 20 feet will be brightly lit up and they won't have penalties penalties to attack it's kind of a helpful reminder for you if you are using dynamic lighting and it's helpful for the players to be like oh I see that you know this guy over here I can barely see him so I'm going to attack this guy instead um, all right so we're gonna do this let's do and do not click all players see light unless um, you know someone cast light on them in that case I'll show you how to do that in a second but save Save changes. Okay. I'm going to put him in the corner now. As you can see, there's this dim light uh, that starts right here now. It's not as bright as this. He can still see stuff, but it just brings in the immersion more. And you can be like, well, hold on. Before you open that door, let me, uh, let me, you know, I'll need to do this. So he opens the door, and you just click that, and you can hit delete. Or... In this case, we're just going to move it off to the side. Okay. And we're going to go back to objects and tokens. And now, boom, the doorway is open. Um, he can now see around there. See the dim light taking effect down here. That's kind of cool. Um, now, the cool, really cool thing is, let me uh, actually bring the opacity all the way up so we can really see how the effect is. All right. That's really cool. So this is where the dim light starts. It's kind of a nice little gradient. Um, but see, here's why I did the Fog of War. Right here, 
he can't see it, even with the uh, dynamic lighting. But, um, it's just the reveal, you know. And we revealed a little bit for him. There, there we go. See? Now he can see a lot better. And that's a good way for dynamic lighting to work. Alright. Now, I believe there's one more thing I want to show you. Um, that all players see light. Alright, let's... Um, there's two, two ways of going about this. Say a wizard just casts light on this person's axe, you know. Um, in that case, you bring away, take away the guy's dark vision, you know. Um, it's better if the wizard casts it on someone who doesn't have dark vision because it would make a lot more sense. But in this case, let's say he doesn't have dark vision anymore. Alright, what's like 25 feet or 30? Well, uh, I don't, it doesn't really matter. Alright, say 25 feet. And, um, you know, that's that's great and but in this case there is no start of dim light because um, I mean you could if you wanted to uh, but uh, okay let's for example let's do 40 feet and start of dim light is at 25 so now the light that's cast is a 25 foot radius and then after that it kind of fades away to give it more realistic sense alright and that's that oh and do all players see light. So now every player on the map will be able to see what this character sees. Um, and a second way of going about that, let's say there's a floating torch or something like that, go to draw shape, you know, fill it up and we're just gonna go like that. Oh wait, no I can't do that, can I? That's right. That's right, because it's stupid. Let's not do that. It's tis a silly thing. I thought you used to be able to do that, but apparently not. Maybe I was just uh, being crazy. All right. So instead, we're going to go to torches. Let's go search up some torches. I mean, you, you probably already get the idea by now. I don't have to tell you, but I'm going to tell you regardless because that's what I do. All right. And all players see lights. Boom. Now this thing is the light. Is the light uh, source? Yeah. And that's just the. Uh, how you set up dynamic lighting pretty much uh, for trees it'd be it's you know you would just kind of follow the branches a couple branches not all of them and just kind of like draw along the branches like that something like that all right and uh, that was that would be how you do that but I'm gonna delete that because that looks silly on this map all right so that's been a dynamic lighting tutorial I hope you are now more aware and enlightened about dynamic lighting in Real 20 and not afraid to use it. Um, if I may, a few good suggestions of using it, a few good places, houses, um, haunted houses. I just did uh, Pathfinder uh, Skinsaw Murders uh, that takes place, there's a haunted house in there and you can I should have set up dynamic lighting, but at the time, you know, grinding long campaigns can wear you down. I'm better now, but you should do that, especially if it, you're uh, really enthusiastic about your campaign. And it can it can be really rewarding. Caves, caves are a really good option. Um, those two places are the best uses for dynamic lighting, really. Outside, not so much. Um, maybe in a cemetery to give it kind of a mood lighting feel but otherwise um, not really shouldn't unless you really want to do a lot of work um, but those three places are the most use uh, for dynamic lighting anyways uh, thanks for watching I hope once again I hope you've learned a little bit and uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial oh and uh, also if you have any ideas about a uh, next tutorial, disc uh, not description, comment. And, you know, as you've probably found out by now, I'm pretty good at replying to comments and messages. Uh, just give me some su some suggestion suggestions. 
and I will try to do some more tutorials because I'm running out of ideas here. I don't know what I haven't really covered. Uh, maybe you're having trouble with something and you want some help. Let me know. Um, anyways, until next time, I'll see you later.